So there are like there are a lot of things you can do, and there are a lot of things you can't do. So it's the same in Orthodox Judaism today. Right. Um, I I couldn't walk into a McDonald's here on on Pico or you know La Cienega, uh, and uh, on a regular basis, and you know have members of my religious community see that. And, you know, that'd be okay. Like that's, but at the same time, I... But, but there are that's, things I can do and there are things I can't do. Okay, but what what happens when you or Stephen I. Weiss goes into a... goes to your rabbi and your rabbi says, well, I think that um, this is this way, or not I think, this is this way and this is how this thing works. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, the world is like this. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, maybe so. My, my own feeling, though, is that, that I, that's actually really wrong. Um, and I, I don't get the sense that you or he or others like you would be satisfied with well, Ketub B'Torah well, where? Just shut up, Ketub B'Torah that's, it says it in the Torah, that's what's written and, and, and I don't want to have to point it out because you, you are inquisitive enough and have enough uh, confidence in your own, the validity of your thoughts that I just don't see you accepting that now you may accept, well, this is the rule and this is just what right, we do but, but on a, but on certain behavioral things, if the rabbi calls you in and say, uh, let's talk about this, I really don't want you doing X, and, uh, that you can act. And, and if you want to do X, you can't be a part of this religious community. There's something wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, you I know, that, that, that happens. Right. Well, I mean, I, so when that's I... that's certainly something that I face. Right. And, I, and I've agreed, okay, I will not do X. Right. Okay, and, but... And that I can and, and very limited. I mean, the rabbi doesn't. You know, I've never experienced. I have not personally experienced pulpit rabbis abusing their power. Just right. You know, but they'll bring me in and say, "Look, this is the line. If you want to be religious, you want to be part of this religious community. You can't cross the line here." Right. Well, I mean, as long as it still works for you. I mean, there's nothing. I think that's a. My own opinion or feeling is that that's a good way of communities are allowed to do that. Right. Um, so then the only question is, are the lines that they draw, do they work for you? Um, yeah, they, they, they do, basically. I mean, there have been religious communities that I've left because I would not. Right. But at my age now, I'm 42, and you now I've done a lot of my exploring wild and forbidden pastures, and right. I'm kind of settling down now to a happy life within my religious community, so it's a little easier for me at... 42 than it was at 28. Okay, but I mean, can I can, can I ask you a question about your, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if you have, uh, and this is I don't know enough about your 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 history with rabbis, but let's say you have a rabbi who says um, they can say, look, you can't do you can't work in the pornography industry if you want to be a member of this shul. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then the ball's in your court. Right. Exactly. But but if. And that I understand, but not if they start to say to you, but it's not because this is the rule of the community, it's because this is a, uh, uh, you have done something bad, and we can't have bad things in this, in this shul. And, and they want to, you to accept that this is, that it is, they want you to accept their understanding of what you did, that it was just wrong, um, and that it was immoral, and um, and either you accept that or you or, 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 or you leave. Do they make those kinds of demands, or they just say... No, it's much more behavioral. It's right. very rare that a rabbi is going to call you in and say, you know, because the, the rules and norms of Orthodox Judaism are pretty much known by its adherents, so right. it's very rare that the rabbi has to call you in and say, look, X is forbidden, writing on the porn industry is forbidden. Um, if they do, it's like it's the last conversation they ever want to have. Right. You know, you can imagine how distasteful this is to any rabbi, orthodox Because they're afraid of confrontation, or they're no, afraid they're of acknowledging just, that it exists? No, it's just disgusting. It's like, they don't want to have to deal with this in there. And they say, well, say, look, this is Tame. This is impure. But the fact that you they find it disgusting is irrelevant. I mean, I find uh, uh, Hasidic dress, dress in 95 degrees disgusting. I don't make, say it's wrong. And I mean, who cares what they find disgusting? I thought they were men of the law. Well, I'm sure they, they can find plenty of laws that, I mean, in essence, you're supposed to create a holy community, and so this is the antithesis of holiness, and so that's how it shakes out. But, well, I don't, under, I don't understand. I remember Why is it Rabbi Cohen at Asha Torah told me, Moshe Cohen, says, look, this is Tame. This okay. is impure, and no Orthodox shul will allow you to 
be involved in this. Okay. Um, so you have to make a decision. If you if you if you want to come around the community, you can't be involved in this. And so, what's your decision? And I said, I'll stay away from the community. Yeah. I'm not going to stop writing. Right. And so that was in uh, 1998. And then in 2007, when the same thing came up again, I said, I'll stop writing on XXX and, and keep my place in the community. So, yeah. I mean, so at, at age 32, right. I, I had a di made a different decision than at age 42. But I, I mean, to me, that's just, it, it's, I, I totally, there's nothing sad about the decision that you made. The loser in that, to me, ironically, is, it's sad to me that that's, that that's, well, I don't know. I mean, it's just that, why, why is that to me? Writing, you were a muckraker who was, when, when I, I lived in Ireland and I was actually, I, I'm interested in, in I, I was, you know, I, I was, uh, I encountered you the first time when I found one of your documentaries that was exposing kind of the negative underbelly because I was wondering what are the consequences of this right. explosion in right. internet pornography mm -hmm. um, and I was and, and I wanted to find out and what I found living on an island in, in Western Europe was uh, a, a documentary from Luke Ford that took a hard not not provocateurish for the sake of it but really looking at what is going on here what are the consequences in the life of one particular woman and just how what's going on this was a source of valuable information to me, and I'm someone who, who is, uh, who, who is, in that case, like you know, was looking. I want to know if people are being hurt by this because that matters to me if they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you were performing a moral service by by doing that work, mm -hmm. and so this is a community that I don't know what you know how how they understand their own their own mission, but but. If you they, and what do you you come to them and you want to lead a life that's that's holier in certain respects and they tell you yeah well you know that muckraking work you're doing exposing the ugly reality of another community which is doing damage to some people's lives we don't have that that's just that's not what we do we don't want to see that shit that's that's to me mm -hmm. that's to me here mm -hmm. well you know what now and now I Joey having told that now I'm pissed off I'm pissed off because because that's not because I like to think of Judaism as better than that. I remember there was a case, I think it was in uh, Pennsylvania, where I believe it was a reform rabbi uh, was was on trial for murdering his wife. And uh, there was a legal analyst who was commenting on the case for the local public radio station. And he withdrew from commenting on the case because he was a Baal Tshuva and his Asha Torah rabbi told him that he was not to comment on the case because it made Jews look bad. It was right. Lashon Hara, and so he withdrew from. It just, I mean, it just. We had a post in Juicy. I think Helen Jupiter had. She, I don't think she wrote it. She commissioned it, but um, it was about just that. I think how uh, Lashon Hara, which is a nice feeling part of Judaism, that, that that's a that that's considered a, a sin. That or uh, an avera that that is actually an instrument of social control, mm -hmm. and and that it's used to stamp out dissent or an honest look at ways in which the community could improve itself, um, and you know uh, there's both the lashon hara which is internal and then there's the being afraid of uh, what the oh my goodness what are the goyim thinking and what will they think if this gets out, and it just creates this fusty atmosphere in which. Problems uh, uh, covered over, per, are, yeah, and are and are and are therefore perpetuated. They don't go away if they're covered over. They they you know, look, Louis Brandeis, Jewish Supreme Court Justice, we should all be proud. He was good for the Jews. Said sunshine is the best disinfectant. Right. Well, I mean, doesn't it piss you off a little? Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. So chapter seventeen, so, verse thirteen, <laughs> says, and the people. After you put the uh, the guy to death who doesn't want to follow the rulings of the judges and the priests and the Levites, and it says you shall burn evil from your midst, then it says and all the people shall hear and fear and do no more presumptuously. So, wait, 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 sorry, would say that the oh uh, uh, yeah, chapter. seventeen, but think verse twelve and thirteen. Anyway, people shall hear and fear. So you talk today over lunch right. about yes. people living in fear. Well, there's certainly as many admonitions in the Torah to live in fear as there are admonitions to live in love. Right. So the Torah is not is no 